Hello guys, welcome back to Tech Projects. I am back with another video. So in this video, we are going to see how to save array list in shared preferences. So most of the time we have to save data like string integers in shared preferences, but sometimes there is a problem and on that time you want to save an entire array list of a custom objects in your shared preferences. So how you can do that? So in this video, I am going to tell that method how you can save the entire array list in a shared preferences and then you can fetch it easily and then you can use it for your own purpose, whatever you want to use. So before starting the video, it is better to see a demo what we actually are going to create to more clarifications of all this. I have to open my phone. So I have to open my phone and this is the application I open this. So whenever you open this application first time, so it is showing zero. So what it means whenever user open the application first time on that time, the list is null and the size of the list is zero. So that's why it is showing zero. Now let me add some data here. So if I add my name here and age, then you can see now it is showing this data. So what it means? I save this data successfully in my shared preferences and I am just showing the name here, but you can show other data as well and you can use this data or in your own way. How do you want to use this? I am my main motive to teach you how to save entire list and how to fetch entire list of a custom object from shared preferences. Now let me add one more data and one more thing. So you can see all three data are saved successfully. Now clear that from recent and open this application again. So you can see if I open this application again, you can see it is showing this data. It means it is fetching from shared preferences and our application is working fine. Now let me add one more time fetching from shared preferences. Save it, clear the app from recent, and you can see fetching from SP. This is the list of one of the list item. So in this video, we are going to read this kind of application. So this video is going to be very helpful. And sometimes you need this kind of application or this kind of functionality in your appli application. So it is better to watch this video till end. So after watching this video, if you feel any worry, you can comment down below. So don't further delay. Now let's start the video. And if you don't like the video till now, then please like the video. And if you don't subscribe to the channel till now, then please subscribe to the channel. So now let's start the video. So click on file, the new, the new project. Click on empty activity, click on next. You can use any language, it is your choice. And I am just giving here a release shared pref tutorial. So our project is building, so let's create a product gradable. So project build successful. Click on I open my previous project and inside my build or gradle module app, I am going to use this dependency. So you have to use this dependency as well if you want to save data in your shared preferences. So basically we are going to convert an entire uh, array list into a string type and then we have and after fetching we have to convert entire string again in array list. So that's why we need to use this dependency gsort. So after pasting the dependency, we are ready to write the code. So first of all, it is better to paste the call layout code entire layout code here because it will going to save our time. So if I open my previous project and activity my XML file, and I can directly copy paste the entire XML code. You can do it by one. So what it contain? It contains this edit text. This is the name of the edit text CT name. This is the edit text tth this is just a button bt save and this is just a text tree to show the data this is all, everything packed inside a linear layout hope you understand now i can copy paste some more things like this one these four datas and this thing as well not this thing sorry this thing find view ids so these things are done. So you can do it by one or we hope you're understanding what are these things. I'm just assigning the XML ID to Java IDs. So now if we want to save the data in an array list, we want to create a custom object. So it is depend on you what type of data or what type of list you want to show. Save you want you can save an integer type list, string type list, or a custom object type list. I am going to use demonstrate with the custom object new Java class. And I can give any class name. So I'm just giving here model class. Now my data contain two things only public string name and uh, second thing public int each that's it these two things now I need to create a constructor to set these data in my array list that's it so this is done now I need to create an array list of model class type okay so this is done now when I have to save the data, when someone click on BD save button, BD save dot set on click list new, then capital O and press enter. So on the time I need to save the data. 
and what data I need to save? I need to save the name and age. So I have to fetch these things from my edit text. It dot get text to string eth dot get text to string. That's it. Hope you understand. Now create this function and this is name change the function parameters name and this is age. So we are going to save this. Now let us suppose user open the application first time. So on that time first of all we have to check whether the shared preferences contain something or not. And if it is contain something then we have to show that data. So I need to also call a function here load data here. Whenever user open the application first time or any time. So this is just a function load data to check whether the shared preferences contain something or not. So now the main work is going to return inside our save data function and load data function. So first of all, let's see the functionality how to save data in shared preferences. So first of all, declare a variable of shared preferences type shared preferences shared preferences equal get application context and let me submit dot get shared preferences and give any preference name. So you can give any name it is your choice. I just give it. This is just a name where your all data is going to store. So I just give here data and mode is private. That's it. Now we need to use a editor here to save data in shared preferences. Shared preferences editor. You give any variable name. I give editor. Shared preferences dot edit. That's it. Now we are going to use JSON to convert the our array list into a string type. So JSON, JSON equal new JSON. First of all, we have to declare a variable for this. Now we first of all, now after this, first of all, we have to add the data in our array list. So what is our array list name? So Sorry, I forget to give the name array list. So this is our array list where we have to add the data. Array list dot add. And what we want to add? We want to add our data like name and age. So how you can? We can create the object for model class and I can pass the name here. And second thing, integer dot parse int and I can pass the age here. So it will going to add this object inside our array list and then I need to save this in my shared preferences. Now create a variable for a string type to store convert an entire array list into a JSON format or string format. So JSON to JSON and inside this pass your array list. That's it. And now we need to store this JSON. So editor dot put string pass a student data. You can give any variable name. This is your table name. Basically, you can say which will help to fetch the data, variable data as well. So this is done. Now you just need to edit it or apply. That's it. So this is done. And after this, you can show the data. And on our text view, I want to show the data, list data, and the, the data which is present. So it is your choice whether you want to show data after saving or not. I am just showing. And that's it. And after this, I need to call the load data function again to fetch all data, all new data from our shared references. So this is the code to save the data in your shared preferences if you want to save array list. Now let's see how to fetch the data. So write code inside this load data function. So first of all, we have to perform this same thing. We need to create a variable for shared preferences type, shared preferences and give the same name. So what is the name? What name I am saying? This data name should be same because this is your file name where your data is going to save. Now after this, again give a variable json to convert the string into json format then we are going to get the json type string from our shared preferences so shared preferences dot get string and the string name is student data student data and by default if it is not present anything then it will going to return null as well so you can see this is the, our file name student data hope you understand give the same name otherwise it will not going to work now we need to use type token here so for why we need to use type token because we have to fetch the data from our shared preferences and then after need we need to convert that string into an array type. So that's why we need to use type token here. So type type equal. So don't import this type right now. It is showing error. So don't worry. And then new type token and it will going to return the array list and the type of the array list is model class. And after this, just type here get time. That's it. Now import this type token first. So alt enter. When you click on alt enter, it will going to import this. So
so this is the type token of json type so make sure you type this json type and now click on this alt and enter in on type so it will automatically going to import the this one which is your suitable one so this is done now after this we need to store our entire array list inside our json so json dot from json and here we need to pass our json string and the type of this string so this is done now we can say use here any check if array list equal equal null then it means no data is present here so on that time i can create a new array list so that user can save the data in our array list tv size dot set text and at that time i can show the list size so zero it will be going to some zero and if it is present here then on that time i need to show the data all entire data so i am going to use a for loop here int i equal zero i less than array list dot size i plus plus and tv size dot set text and what i want to show i want to show first of all the previous data as well so dot get text to string then i need to concatenate backspace and to change the new line and then show the name here so array list dot get i dot name so you can use this data in your own way it is your choice and then i am again concatenate backspace and to change new line so finally guys our application is ready and now it's time to check our app whether that is working or not if it is working fine then we will end this video so application will be successful it will going to install the application inside our phone application installs successfully so you can see one first time whenever user open the app first time the application data is null so that's why it is showing zero we set the zero here now let me add one thing so this is first data save so it is saved now this is second saved now close this application from reset and open this so which is the application this is one tutorial one so you can see this is first and second data is present here now let me make a final check of the application so it is working recent so this is working so i hope guys you learn something new in this video if you have any query if you have any question just comment down below i will try to give the answer of every comment please like the video please subscribe the channel please share the channel if you have any question just comment down below so thank you guys see you soon in next amazing video thank you